Kansas Speedway was brought onto the NASCAR scene in 2001 and has always been considered a good but not great racetrack. However, since the repave in 2012, there have been a ridiculous amount of big crashes, more than any other intermediate track. The first ARCA race I ever watched as a young fan was the 2012 Kansas Lottery 98.9. You can imagine my surprise when this happened on lap two. The 52 sliding. You see the, the 52 is around sideways. He tried to exit the corner high coming off turn number two. Lost a little bit of rear grip. Got sideways in there. Here's the contact with the 16 of Matt Lofton. Chad Hockenbrough trying to stay out of that inside wall. And then a little, we also were able to take a look at Matt Lofton. Incredible at the speeds that these cars are traveling. ARCA has had their fair share of big crashes at Kansas, but that's for another video. Today we're going to be looking at some of the wild NASCAR crashes that have happened at Kansas since 2012. Kansas was the fourth stop on the NASCAR truck series schedule in 2013 and was shaping up to be another great year of young drivers versus veteran drivers. One of these veterans was Todd Rodine, who was in his last year of racing full time. Unfortunately, Todd was collected in this big incident. And behind him with a 13 of Todd Bodine gets into the wall. And hard contact from the 99 right, of Brian Silas. Yeah, right, Another truck involved behind them. Yeah, I'm all right. A lot of debris. Todd made contact. Watch slow motion here. Great camera angle, guys. Watch this thing fling into that outside wall. And that was a hard hit by the 99 of Brian Silas. But all four tires up off the racetrack. Brennan Newberry, right side of your screen, already into the outside wall. Wow. Big contact and then the hard hit into the wall once again. Most of the stuff that he had to take that hard hit from when he hit with the left front, Brian Silas had already tore a lot of it off. So that's that's a real tough blow when you... Brennan Newberry got loose under Bodine, sent both drivers into the wall, and Bodine was hit hard by Brian Silas. The craziness for the weekend didn't end there, as the next day in the cup race, Kyle Busch and Joey Logano had this big crash. 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 Kyle Busch's bad day continues, and he got Joey Logano as he was sliding down off the wall in turn number four. As Joey Logano was trying to get by on the inside. You'll see Joey coming along here. Thinks Kyle's going to stay up next to the wall, but the car comes down, and that is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Joey was all the way on the eighth. Oh, the car just snaps out from under him again, like it did earlier. In the race. Stay to the bottom. Stay to the bottom. All clear. All clear. The fall race didn't treat Bush any better, as he had another big hit, and Brian Vickers had one of the biggest hits of the year. Caution flag is out. A hard crash from Ryan. And you can see right here is Brian Vickers. He's sideways. It looks like he's trying to save it. Oh, my. Look at this little. Oof. Wow. When those cars, when they break loose, they just snap around. Wow, look at Truex and Casey Kane dodging there. Kenseth scooting by there. What a terrible crash. And that's just what's happening. Yeah, with this tire and this track combination. The next Kansas spring race in 2014 was shaping up to be a typical intermediate track race until a horrifying crash with Justin Allgaier and David Gillen happened. Allgaier and Gilliland have a horrible collision oh, right at no. the start finish line. Oh, that's bad. It is David Gilliland's car that comes to a halt in flames. Uh, Algaier get clipped by Almendinger and watch that red car shoot across the track right yeah. into the path of David Gilliland. And I guarantee you, Gilliland was on it trying to get through it without getting in it and he didn't quite make it and that is unbelievable. Initially from the live camera, it appeared that a couple mid-pack cars were tangled up in a small incident, but then the camera panned to Gilliland and Algaier. After contact with Paul Menard, A.J. Amendinger was set spinning into the infield where he hit and turned Justin Allgaier directly into the path of David Gilliland. The Spring Cup race in 2017 had been a crazy race with 10 caution flags flown already, 
Intensity was building up as there were only about 60 laps left, but no one saw this coming. Up there in the front right now with the 42. Oh, Whoa, trouble. Big, big, big crash. crash. Danica Patrick and Joey Logano oh, and man, Eric, Eric Alvaro. Oh, man, it looked like oh. the 22 just got loose. I think yeah. that, oh, man. What an what a ride that Danica went Danica on. Danica took a heck of a ride into the, the wall, and then the just, 43 just plowed in there. Yeah, he had nowhere to go. I think he committed to the outside lane. This horrible crash ended up sidelining Eric Amarola for seven races after he suffered a compression fracture in his back from the wreck. Bubba Wallace, who later that year in October was announced for the full-time seat in 2018, filled in for four races, while Reagan Smith filled in for two and Billy Johnson filled in for his first and only Cup Series start at Sonoma. The fall race wasn't any less intense, as Kansas was a cutoff race for the round of 12. Jamie McMurray and Matt Kenseth both needed great runs to advance and had both picked up solid stage points. However, their champion hopes would be dashed after this Jones crash. and the 24, and around goes the 77 of Jones, almost up over the wall as they hit hard. Matt Kenseth? The 20 of Kenseth involved, as is the one of McMurray. To the right, look at this at real speed. Look how big this impact is right here. And that's so easy to do. Both Kenseth and McMurray were eliminated after this crash in what was supposed to be Kenseth's final season. However, he was able to avenge this just a few weeks later when he picked up his final career win in Phoenix. 2018 NASCAR Cup Series rookie William Byron had been off to a very tough start, and it didn't get any better in the 12th race of the season at Kansas. He's right up against that wall, but he made the pass. Oh, oh trouble. Hard Man, the big, wall goes big, William Byron. Byron noses in heavy. Oh, Byron went in hard. Oh. Matt Kent has piled into Byron right to, uh, to the 14 car right in. wide there. Byron on the yeah, bottom. He just gets yeah, loose just, underneath yeah, he the He just starts 14. spinning out, gets into the... Oh. Man, it just... Oh, my gosh, that car almost went over. Just hooked. Oh, my... How close was that for Harvick? And for Kurt Busch also. Maybe a little damage to the right side, actually, from the 14. I think we now know where the Golden Horseshoe went. Byron would suffer another dismal 38th place finish later the same year at Kansas and would end the season with only four top 10 finishes while the rest of his teammates went to the playoffs. Because of all the chaos in 2020, Kansas had its first race moved to 19th on the schedule on a Thursday night. After a multi-car crash involving Matt D and Joey Logano, a restart was on the table with less than 90 to go. Push that Atlanta car back out front, more wrecking. And around goes the 95, oh, and the 97, oh, hit. Oh, the wall. Oh my goodness, oh, awful. Ryan Priest. Oh, no, ahead of them, the 95 gets in the wall. Chris Bell and Ryan Newman. So violent, 3,400 pounds of race car just thrown up into the air. Ryan Priest was luckily okay, but an even wilder crash happened later that year in the Xfinity Series. The hang seven. on, hang on, hang on. On the apron, the 21 of Anthony Alfredo was into the wall hard. He's upside down, sliding through one and two. And normally you think you're going to get down here, you're going to slide up on, into the racetrack, but he just never had a chance to. Algar just kind of, I think, needed to give that spot up and get out of the throttle, but knowing there's a race win. This was absolutely wild watching live, as I can't remember the last time an Xfinity car got upside down at an intermediate track. Thankfully, Alfredo was okay, and Justin Allgaier took responsibility, calling his move very dumb. That's it for this video, and if you made it this far, don't forget to like and subscribe. Peace.